Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to continue our conversation about polynomial graphing by discussing turning points. So turning points are going to be where a graph changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So essentially, they are what they sound like. They are where our graph turns around, makes a change. And what they look like in our picture are kind of hills and valleys. So knowing the degree of our polynomial, which we know is our highest power of x, gives us information about the possibility of how many turning points our graph might have. And it turns out that there's an actual rule that says a polynomial of degree n can have at most n minus 1 turning points. So the maximum number of turning points for any given polynomial is 1 less than the degree. Okay, we'll use that information a little bit more. Let's take this graph here and let's identify just visually our turning points. So again, we're looking for places where our graph does a turnaround or hills and valleys. So going left to right, I can see that I have one turning point here. Always reading from left to right, at first my graph is decreasing and then it turns around to become increasing. So that gives us this turning point, in this case kind of like a valley. Following still from left to right, I continue increasing until I get up to the top of this hill here. Here I change from increasing to decreasing, so I get a turning point. It looks like at x equals 1. And finally, continuing to follow, I get a change from decreasing to increasing right here at x equals 2 to find my third and final turning point. Okay, so now that we know what turning points look like on a graph, let's see if we can identify how many a particular polynomial might have. So for each of the following, determine the minimum and maximum number of turning points the graph could have. Well, we know that the maximum number of turning points has to do with the degree. In fact, it is one less than the degree, always. So let's start by identifying the degree. We know that that is always the highest power of x. So in this case, n equals 4, or our highest power of x is 4. So that means that my maximum number of turning points will be 4 minus 1, or 3. Now in terms of a minimum, we want to think about end behavior and what that means. So with this having positive lead coefficient, I know that the end behavior to the right is up. And with an even degree, I know that the other side should be exactly the same. So when we think about in the end, this is what will happen. In the short term, we have to turn around at least once to connect those two up-up behaviors. So an even degree polynomial has a minimum of one turning point. It has to turn around at least one time to get from up to up or down to down depending on your lead coefficient. Okay, checking out this y equals 1 over here, we have y equals negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 12x minus 1. Finding our lead term, we find that that is negative 2x cubed, and zeroing in on our degree there, we have 3. So our maximum number of turning points will be our degree minus 1, or 2. And thinking about the minimum number of turning points, well, for an odd degree polynomial with negative lead coefficient, that means the behavior on the right-hand side is down, and the behavior on the right should be opposite for odd, and so that is up. So for an odd degree polynomial, we don't actually have to have a turning point to get from opposite to opposite end behavior. 
it is possible it might not turn around at all. So our minimum number of turning points for any odd degree polynomial is zero. Okay, let's look at our bottom two here. So for p of x, x equals x to the fifth minus 9x cubed plus 2x plus 6. Our lead term here is our x to the fifth, which makes our degree 5. So our maximum number of turning points will be 5 minus 1, or 4, always degree minus 1. And again, because this is an odd degree polynomial, we will have opposite end behavior. Positive lead coefficient means up to the right and down to the left. So we don't have to turn around to connect those, so minimum of zero turning points. And last but not least, k of x. Remember, this one, looking for the highest power of x, we happen to find it over here at the end. So our degree is 6. So our maximum number of turning points is 6 minus 1, or 5. And our minimum number of turning points, let's see, end behavior-wise, this has a negative lead coefficient, so I know the behavior to the right is down. With even degree, the other behavior will be exactly the same. And the only way for me to connect those is to have at least one turnaround. Got to have at least one hill there. So I have a minimum of one turning point. Now one important thing to note is that this is just a range of possibilities. It is not to say that we will, on g of x, have one or three. We might have any number in between. We could have 1, we could have 2, we could have 3. For p of x, we could have any number between 0 and 4, and so on. This is just the minimum and maximum possible. Alright guys, that does it for this video on turning points in our polynomial graphing series. Until next time, we'll catch you later.